Coming up on Fulton Today, strengthening communications between commissioners and city mayors. We'll explain. And we'll tell you how the Atlanta Hawks partner with the county to help keep young men on the right track. Fulton Today starts right now. Welcome to Fulton Today, everyone. Fulton County commissioners and mayors from across the county sit down for a serious conversation about everything from economic development to transportation. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega was at the meeting and she has our story. Priscilla? Once again, it was another successful collaboration between the commissioners and mayors from all across the county. Two topics were once again discussed, economic development and a possible tease blast. While a formal agreement is still in the works, elected officials say these talks are headed in the right direction. From north to south, mayors from nearly every city in the county sat with commissioners at one table to collaborate and build relationships. Having these meetings and having these conversations are putting us in a better position to trust each other. Um, because that's what we're here for. The elected officials delved deeper into the proposed plan to bring more economic opportunities to the entire county. It appears that uh, 80 to 90 percent of the geographical location mayors along with the Board of Commissioners are all heading in the same direction. We don't have a concrete plan, but you have a draft, if I may use a lack of a better term, of an idea of what we want the future to look like. We as a county, we're competing not only with other metro Atlanta counties, but other counties in the region or in the southeast. And so by coordinating our efforts and getting synergy, we can be a whole lot more effective. The second half of the meeting focused on a possible T-splost. If approved, the special purpose local option sales tax is estimated to generate $1.2 billion. That money would be used for transportation projects countywide. We've uh, polled all the staff uh, with all the cities and county and determined what kind of projects would be on the list, what kind of criteria were used for that selection process, and uh, we feel like very comfortable where we're at now as far as everybody in agreement, the types of products that would be on the list. The actual tax would last for a maximum of five years. The next meeting is scheduled for December, which would put them on track of their proposed timeline. The earliest the T-SPOS would be put on the ballot if approved is November 2016. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. Thank you very much. Though the 2016 General Assembly is still several weeks away, county commissioners have an idea of what they'd like to see addressed next session. Fulton's External Affairs Director briefed commissioners on some proposed ideas for the Intergovernmental Affairs team. Commissioners asked that the lobbying team include several items on the agenda, including legislation to support mental health needs for the courts and stronger laws to assist homeowner associations, just to name a few. We're looking at um, issues including annexation, um, justice, transportation, health care, and all of the major um, service delivery areas that Fulton County is involved in. The 40-day 2016 General Assembly begins in January. We'll have complete coverage from the Gold Dome on all legislation related to Fulton County. Fulton commissioners prepare to go one on one with their constituents about the 2016 budget. This as the budget process has been modified. After hearing from each county department and agency, the Budget Commission deliberated on how tax dollars should be allocated next year. The Budget Commission includes the county manager, commission chairman and finance officials. They, along with consultants and Fulton's chief operating and strategic officers, are all a part of this new process. Some of the specific things that you'll see differently come out of that process, um, again, is a budget that's prioritized within the six priority area that the board has identified. Those priority areas are all people are safe, all people are healthy, all people have economic opportunity, all people are self-sufficient, all people are culturally and recreationally enriched, uh, all people trust government is efficient, effective, and fiscally sound. The citizens in each commission will get a chance to weigh in on programs and services that they would like to see in the county's 2016 financial plan. 
Residents can see the list of upcoming budget hearings on the county's website. By law, Fulton's final spending plan must be approved before the end of January. Commissioners from four neighboring counties join forces with Fulton board members to address major issues facing homeowner associations. An eight-hour HOA boot camp at the Georgia International Convention Center brought members of various homeowner associations all under one roof. District 5 Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. spearheaded the event with support from his colleague, Commissioner Joan Garner. We had um, nine commissioners from seven counties uh, help us in this effort. Rockdale County, DeKalb County, Henry County, Douglas County, Cobb County, Clayton County, uh, and DeKalb. So we're, we're real excited about the response that we've received and we're glad to see people registering and educating themselves on the best practices for homeowners associations. Commissioners from Douglas, Cobb, Clayton, and Henry counties all took part in the boot camp. A number of people um, from Henry County, um, Clayton County, um, all the way down to McDonough, they're here today. And they're here because of the resources that they can get to take back to our county. Real estate agents and attorneys were also on hand to offer advice. Workshops ranged from homeowners association elections to dues collections. Fulton partners with the Atlanta Hawks to help young men reach their best potential. It is a part of a White House administration program. FGTV's Daryl Carver has our story. County Commissioner Joan Garner and Commission Chairman John Eaves joined representatives from Fulton County Human Services, 100 black men, and the Atlanta Hawks in the effort to ensure that all young minority men are headed in the right direction and have the support to get there. It was part of an initiative called My Brother's Keeper, a day of relationship building. More than 150 young men took part in the program. What are your challenges? And as you go, as you hear different speakers throughout the day, they're going to let you know that your voice is being heard, that you truly matter. The conversation centered around the challenges young African American men face and the future they can create. But if there's one thing that I knew that would propel me to that next level, didn't have the vision, didn't have the passion, but I had the faith in God. I'm here because it's my destiny, it's my journey, it's my mission, it's my obligation to give back. Uh, my mother always said, to whom much is given, uh, much is required. So uh, this is what I believe in doing first. Uh, I'm a child of God first. Before I was a journalist, before I was a black man, all of that stuff or whatever, I am a child of God. And, and he honors when you give back uh, to the community and you know your responsibility. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be where I am and I wouldn't be where I am going had it not been for someone who took time out uh, on a Saturday morning like this to speak to me, to be an example. The Fulton County My Brother's Keeper Task Force is composed of faith-based and nonprofit organizations, as well as corporations, educators, local government officials, law enforcement, legal advisors, concerned citizens, and the Atlanta Hawks. Well, I think the purpose of having Hawks alumni and NBA and NFL legends here is to really show, show and highlight to the young boys that People were just at risk, just like you. These men did not come from privileged backgrounds. They came from single parent households. Some of them saw family members incarcerated, but they had enough faith and determination to make something better for their lives. So they're really just a story that anybody can make it. And so it really, using alumni and using legends in sports really just highlights and emphasizes that if you put your mind to something positive, you can become somebody. The county's My Brother's Keeper Task Force has eight areas that its program focuses on, ranging from quality and creativity to parental involvement and development. These are initiatives that Commissioners Eves and Garner both enthusiastically support. It's about supporting our brothers. We all are our brother's keeper. This is the positive statistic that I want people to see on a Saturday morning. We have committed young people here taking charge of their lives, taking steps in their lives to do good. The young men were later treated to a free Atlanta Hawks basketball game. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Daryl Carver. Thank you very much, Daryl. And when we come back, filling in the education gap, one conversation at a time. It's a part of our district by district coverage next.
Folson leads the conversation about filling in the education gap, and it also celebrates its workforce carnival style. Here's this week's District by District coverage. We begin with Chairman John Eves as he serves as keynote speaker at the Fill in the Gap Education Summit at Atlanta Technical College. The at-large commissioner and college professor spoke about academic performance, educator professional development, and student preparedness. Those interested in a possible career in education took part in the summit, as did educators and nonprofit organizations. As an educator, I know now I have to change some of my strategies in order to make sure that we are meeting the needs of all individuals, uh, not just the students that just do well in traditional school, but also um, those students that, that may not do so well. We gotta find solutions to help them to find their, their way and to find um, what educational path that's gonna help them to be successful. We're just gathering together as a, as a collective just to have a conversation and seeing where we are and, and how we can better impact the young people of our community. Chairman Eves took part in the Fill in the Gap Education Summit as a part of his involvement in the National My Brother's Keeper Initiative. District 5 Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. joins in on the celebration to thank the Fulton County workforce. During a week-long observance, county employees enjoyed various programs and events to recognize their hard work all year long. I'm very glad that our personnel department put this event together for our Fulton County employees. Um, we have the greatest employees in the state of Georgia, so we're very proud of them, we're proud of the work that they do, uh, and this is just a chance to celebrate them and all their hard work. The Carnival Style Fellowship was paid for with the funds generated from vending machines in county buildings. Again, I think it's a great opportunity for everyone to come out and the county to show a token of appreciation for staff over the year for services and whatnot. The celebration at honors dedicated employees nominated by their peers will happen next month. And finally in District 6, it's the annual salute to veterans at the New Beginning Senior Center. The senior participants pay tribute to former and current members of the nation's armed forces. The annual observance honors the veterans, most of whom are members of the center. Times like this is just so easily forgotten and um, it's needed to be bought back um, each year so we can just realize um, the, the fight these people have done um, to enable us to be able to be the people that we are today. According to some of the veterans, the annual breakfast and program is one of the highlights of the year for them at the senior facility. And still to come, Fulton solicits input on HIV and AIDS prevention. We'll tell you how you can add your voice when we come back. Fulton's HIV task force is seeking community input on how to best deal with an epidemic that has hit the county hard. We're talking about HIV and AIDS. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has our story. Gathered in a circle at the Phillips Rush Center, many who work within the HIV AIDS community tossed out ideas about how to curb the growing incidence of new HIV cases. That's also the sort of thing we can find out what they're doing elsewhere. The Fulton HIV AIDS Task Force, established by the Board of Commissioners as a fact-finding body, is holding listening sessions, searching out all possible strategies to prevent and eventually eradicate HIV AIDS. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports Metropolitan Atlanta has the fifth highest rate of new HIV cases in the country. It is a health crisis the task force says must be addressed. We have a huge problem here in Fulton County, which is really the epicenter of the HIV epidemic. As someone who's worked a lot uh, in the field of HIV and AIDS, I need to hear from people that don't do this every single day. Some fresh ideas. The Board of Commissioners established this task force in December 2014. Already members have learned that some of the barriers to care include lack of transportation and patients not having valid identification. It is absolutely critical we get a handle on this and come up with a strategy to end HIV in our community. We've seen communities like San Francisco working on this. We've seen Washington, D.C. We're a little behind, 
but we can certainly catch up. We've got some very talented people here on the task force. Task force members are asking those who can't get to a listening session in person to provide input by way of an online survey. The web address is listed on your screen. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Meanwhile, as the holidays are fast approaching, Fulton employees are trying to help the Red Cross stock up on its blood supply. Donors rolled up their sleeves inside the Fulton County South Service Center. 18 pints were collected on this day, making the total 75 pints collected for the year at that one location. One donor says she survived a horrible crash, so that's why she gives regularly. In 1998, I got hit by a drunk driver and I needed two blood transfusions. So ever since then, I give blood whenever I can. I do it all the time when they come in our area to help people because uh, I feel if I'm healthy enough to give blood and I would love to help other people. The Red Cross says the process is nearly painless, only takes about an hour and one pint can save up to three lives. Organizers say the holiday season is when donations are needed most. For information, go to redcrossblood.org. Children learn that it's never too early to learn how to prepare a healthy recipe. Seven, seven, four, Preschool age children helped blend a yummy treat at the Eat a Georgia Rainbow event. The Children's Museum of Atlanta hosted the hands-on activity at the East Roswell Library. The museum is currently under construction until next month, so many programs and activities are happening right in our library system. Now at this event, youngsters learned what fruits and vegetables are in season and how to make a pumpkin smoothie. Everything's hands-on so that the kids can see that they can do it and, you know, it keeps them um, with you because if you're just talking to them, then they can drift away from you. But if you're getting them like, oh, I'm going to need some help. Um, I don't know how to cook, so <laughs> you're going to have to help me with this. The American Heart Association recommends children have at least one fruit or vegetable at each meal. And still to come, young people learn how milk gets to their table from the cow. We'll explain, stay with us. <music> Photographers capture all aspects of flight at a new exhibit now on display. The Aviation Community Cultural Center's Contemporary Gallery is showcasing the works of many local artists. It's inspired by flight as a metaphor. The exhibit features amazing photography and mixed media. Artwork is our interpretation of flight that deals with real power, strength in motion, and spirituality. The free exhibit runs until January. The Aviation Community Cultural Center has a number of community and cultural programs dedicated to flight. You can get more information on all of them by visiting FultonArts.org. And finally, what used to be story time at an in-town library turns into show and tell with a real live cow. Yeah. Okay, so the a mobile dairy classroom was set up at the Central Library so children could learn all about a milking station and Maggie the cow. The children were able to get within a few feet from the two-year-old cow. The instructor explained a number of facts about cows, including how much they eat. We want to teach them how the dairy farmers take care of their cows, what they eat, what's going into the cow's bodies, and then how they produce their milk. The children saw the modern way to milk a cow by using a machine. They were also taught how they should eat three servings of dairy a day. Now for more events at the library system, you can visit their website at afpls.org. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to connect with you online. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, anytime on our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.